Welcome to Bio Live. I'm Jackson Bain, and welcome to this first in a series of conversations about biotechnology. These programs are designed for those of you in academia, uh, those of you in biotechnology business enterprises, and government officials and elected representatives. In each of these programs, we'll take a single subject and we'll talk to an expert in the field about that subject. Our first guest today is going to talk to us about plant-made pharmaceuticals. Please welcome Andrew Baum, who's the president and CEO of Symbiosis Genetics. Andrew, welcome to the program. Thank you, Jack. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, let's start with some basics. What exactly do you mean by plant-made pharmaceuticals? What are they? Plant-made pharmaceuticals, or PMPs, are therapeutic proteins that are produced by plants that have been modified through biotechnology to produce those proteins. They include vaccines, antibodies, hormones, and a wide array of other proteins and peptides. While plant-made pharmaceuticals themselves are relatively new, of course, the use of plants to produce drugs is as old as man itself. From drugs ranging from aspirin through to taxol, vincristin, vinblastin, from the treatment of cancer, plants have been a source of drugs for man for thousands of years. So in effect, this is just the most recent evolution of the use of plants by man to produce new pharmaceuticals. How did this application come about? What targets were they really looking for? Well, if you take a look at the or evolution of plant-made pharmaceuticals, they really represent the intersection of two evolutionary tracks. On the one hand, the agricultural biotechnology companies, who had originally been challenged by the mere act of pr developing plants to produce transgenic proteins, have now evolved to the point where that is a very routine and standard process. On the other hand, the pharmaceutical biotechnology companies, who in the early 1980s were struggling to get one or two products to the FDA at a time, have experienced tremendous success. So there's now a wide array and literally dozens of pharmaceutical proteins on the market. These, new, these two technologies have now conver converged to the point where plant-made pharmaceuticals are a viable and compelling um, business opportunity. Andrew, let's talk about some benefits. How will this actually benefit patients and how will it benefit the whole development of drugs? Well, I think that the biggest benefit to patients will be that they will have a wider array of drugs that treat chronic and potentially life-threatening indications. So biotechnology has already delivered tremendous results to patients with diseases ranging from arthritis to cancer to asthma. The ability of the biotechnology industry to continue to offer new products will only be enhanced by plant-made pharmaceuticals. What types of drugs are being developed and, and which diseases are targeted and, and why those? Well, in general, plant-made pharmaceuticals are aimed at indications where you have large doses and, and or chronic indications where volumes are, are relatively large. So this means the diseases like arthritis, allergies, diabetes, conditions that affect millions of people uh, and for which treatment is required on a daily or weekly basis are the indications where I think you'll see the greatest initial uptake for plant-made pharmaceuticals. So is this technology being used by both drug companies and agriculture companies? I think that what you're seeing is that the initial drive for this technology came out of the agricultural biotechnology space. The agricultural biotechnology companies were the ones that had the intellectual property and the capability of putting genes into plants. What you're seeing, however, is that these companies are now becoming, are morphing into drug development companies that combine the ability to put genes into plants and then extract the resulting proteins, but in addition have the CGMP and early clinical design capabilities typical of a traditional uh, biotech drug development company. What do pharmaceutical companies, the big ones and the small ones, think about plant-made pharmaceuticals? Well, I think it's an evolving attitude. Originally, when the first PMP company started to approach Big Pharma, they almost had what I would call a field of dreams approach. They were saying, we have this technology platform. It's really powerful. We want you to pay us to deploy our platforms to make your products. And I think the pharmaceutical industry has said, we're interested in this technology. We see this as an opportunity. But you, got, you in the, pharma, the plant-made pharmaceutical space need to earn your spurs. You need to demonstrate that this technology is viable by bringing products through the, at least the early stages of the clinical trial process. As a result, most of the plant-made pharma companies 
are now pursuing a strategy where they develop products themselves through the early stages of the clinic and then look to partner with um, the large-scale pharmaceutical companies. I think that the biggest challenge for the PMP industry moving forward will be clinical precedent and regulatory precedent. So how many companies are involved in plant-made pharmaceuticals right now? There are well over a dozen companies that are pursuing this opportunity, including companies in the United States, Canada, Europe, and Asia. That's a relatively large number of companies for an opportunity like this. However, I believe that people are drawn by the tremendous financial um, and clinical opportunities that the technology represents. It should be acknowledged that this is a challenging area that requires mastering and integrating a wide array of skills and that the first companies who succeed in this area will be those who are able to integrate execution and development with good science. Well, as you know, great partnerships are the heart of biotechnology research and development. Are there partnerships now working between plant-made pharmaceutical companies and traditional pharmaceutical companies? I think that th there certainly are partnerships in place right now between larger biotechnology companies and pharma companies and plant-made pharmaceutical companies. I believe as the regulatory precedents are established, those partnerships will become more significant and more meaningful. Is that being going to be driven really by disease uh, targeting focus from the larger, say, pharma company toward the uh, PMP company, or will the PMP company come with the disease uh, focus uh, to the pharma company? I think initially it will be the latter, that the first partnerships will be driven by PMP companies who have demonstrated their platforms are capable of producing uh, proteins where the PMP platform is enabling. Over time, as pharma companies begin to believe that the PMP companies can deliver value, the pharma companies will begin going to the PMP companies for those products where the technology is enabling. It should be acknowledged that this technology is useful for certain proteins and not useful for others. You need to identify those, those areas where the technology truly enables commercialization of proteins because of issues of scale, because of the unique ability of the technology to address issues of scale, economics, or other factors. Agricultural biotechnology is one of the most regulated industries on earth. Uh, how does the USDA regulate plant-made pharmaceuticals? Plant-made pharmaceuticals are regulated by the USDA's APHIS department. All outdoor production of plant-made pharmaceuticals is done under permits issued by APHIS. In order for a company to receive such a permit, they need to file a detailed application that defines every element of plant production, from field selection through to plant care through to harvest and post-harvest post field monitoring. D once a permit is obtained, USDA inspectors visit the fields a minimum of five times. Some of those visits are announced, some of those visits are unannounced. In addition to actually inspecting the fields themselves, USDA inspectors look at the records and meet with the employees who have been trained to uh, implement field production. It should be noted that in order to obtain a permit, every aspect of that production is rigorously defined as part of the permit application by standard operating procedures that look at every aspect of production. These SOPs ensure that the agency can uh, monitor what is going on by looking at how tightly the standard operating procedures are complied with. Well, that's the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Doesn't the Food and Drug Administration also have a hand in this? The Food and Drug Administration is responsible for making sure the plant-made pharmaceuticals are safe, efficacious, and produced in a re reproducible manner. The bar for plant-made pharmaceuticals is no higher or no lower than it is for uh, proteins produced through other technologies such as E. coli, yeast, or animal cells. The FDA has published a points to consider or a white paper that systematically lays out what a plant-made pharmaceutical, what a plant-made pharmaceutical producing company must demonstrate in order to obtain regulatory approval. And I think the key message from that points to consider is that the bar again will be no higher or no lower for plant-made pharmaceuticals than it is for other biologics. What about other countries? I mean, you mentioned, uh, of course, Canada, and then there are other countries in Asia. Uh, any in Europe, for example? Yes, there are several companies that are producing plant-made pharmaceuticals in Europe. And in fact, um, the regulatory regime in uh, the European countries, in France in particular, are uh, not that different from what takes place uh, in the United States. Is the growing of therapeutic proteins in plants safe? What are you doing to ensure there's no commingling with the food supply? As an industry, we absolutely are convinced that what we're doing is safe. And that's based on the two, two factors that I spoke to before. The first is this is a highly regulated industry where every aspect of production from field selection through to harvest is monitored by the USDA. 
In addition, because of our commitment to stewardship, um, we, are, we believe we have the practices in place that are uh, necessary to ensure that plant-made pharmaceuticals do not commingle or end up in the food supply. How do you do that? How do you make sure there's no commingling? It is all driven by, it, it's a blocking and tackling exercise. If you were to take a look at the SOP book that our company has, it would, comp it would be about six inches high. Basically, every aspect of production, from field selection through to planting, harvesting, care of the crop, monitoring of the field after harvest, all is dictated by rigorous SOPs. We have SOPs that determine how you clean a grain drill, how you clean a planter, what type of chemicals you can use, what type of people can work in the fields, what type of training. Everyone who works with plant-made pharmaceuticals has to go through extensive training. Every aspect of production is tightly monitored and tightly controlled. Lately there's been talk about gene flow and pollen drift. Are these relevant to plant-made pharmaceuticals? Again, as part of the plant-made pharmaceutical working group, the plant-made pharmaceutical companies have embraced a concept of rigid, rigorous stewardship to ensure that such gene flow and pollen drift does not take place. Every aspect of production, from field selection through to harvest through to transportation of the crop, is covered by rigorous SOPs, which the sole purpose of which is to ensure that plant-made pharmaceutical producing crops do not end up mixing with the food supply. All right, if I were a pharmaceutical CEO and I wanted more information about plant-made pharmaceuticals and how they might uh, be beneficial to my products, uh, what resources are available? Well, the first person I would speak to is Andrew Baum at Sambiosis Genetics. That's www.sambiosis.com. If you're looking for a more general depiction of the opportunity, there are several sites that one can go to. Certainly Bio's website at www.bio.org gives a great overview of uh, the technology. The Phyto Pharma Online Community at www.plantpharma.org gives a great overview of not only what the industry is saying about the technology, but what uh, patient groups and NGOs are saying about the opportunities associated with plant-made pharmaceuticals. And to get a sense of the um, regulation of this technology, the USDA APHIS website at www.aphis.usda.gov is an excellent source. Andrew, thanks very much for being with us. And thank you for coming to the Bio website and Bio Live. We'll be back next time with another subject of interest in biotechnology. Please join us. Thank you.